I recently went out to dinner at a Mexican restaurant and had this most wonderful salad. I said, I've got to come home and make that at home and make it for you. What it was was a, imagine this mango salsa on a bed of greens with some red onion and some avocado and some grilled chicken that was just cooked perfectly. And then it was all brought together with a lime vinaigrette that was just out of this world. It was delicious. And today I'm gonna to make it for you. So I'm Rockin' Robin and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after my chef joke. How do you make a salad very cold? Use iceberg lettuce. I'm gonna start off here by making my mango salsa. That way it'll have time for those flavors to get to know each other and develop a little bit. I have a nice big plump red tomato here and I'm just gonna take the core out of it and cut it up, slice it up into nice bite-sized pieces. I'm trying to keep all the pieces pretty much uniform if you can. I'm slicing these about half an inch thick and then once I do that, I'll turn it the other direction and cut it the same way. Then I'll go ahead and toss that tomato into a bowl. I am gonna use the whole tomato for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop that up and place that in the bowl as well. Next up, we're gonna work on our mango, because this is mango salsa, by the way. Now to cut this, I'm gonna cut down alongside the seed. Now the seed runs in this direction, so I'm gonna cut down the cheek, they call it, and I should be right next to the seed, which I am. Then I'll flip it over and we'll cut off the other cheek, right along that, that seed. Then I'm gonna cut the ends of this off just to get it as close to the seed and not waste any mango. So you don't wanna waste a drop, right? Especially if it's sweet. Once we get the other end cut off, then we're ready to start cutting the cheeks. So with each cheek, I'm gonna just score the mango, but I'm trying not to go through the skin, right? Wanna keep it intact. So just slice it all down about a half an inch wide on each one, then turn it the other way and score the other direction. This is gonna give us our nice uniform chunks. I'll then invert this and look at that, beautiful chunks. It almost reminds me of a pineapple for some reason. Anyway, take your knife and just cut those pieces right off. With those two end pieces, I'll score it just the same, trying not to go through the skin, make uh, little chunks half inch wide and then slide them right into the bowl. And of course, I'll do the other half of the mango as well. A little red onion comes next, so I'll cut off the ends, and we're just gonna use a little bit of this, not too much, but I want it super fine. So here's how we make it super fine, really quick. All right, we'll make our horizontal cuts, then we're gonna make some vertical cuts, and we're gonna keep those cuts nice and close together. Then after we make those, then we're gonna do our regular slice, and you're gonna see how quickly you can do a super fine dice. And then I'll sprinkle some of that in. I'm probably not gonna use all of it, but I, you know, just sprinkle it in until you feel like you got the right amount. Then I like to give it a little toss. Then I can see, you know, as I mix it up, do I need a little more? You know, it just depends on how much onion you like in your salsa. Now we need to add a little bit of heat to this. So I'm using a jalapeno here. So I, I'm a little bit of a wimp, so I do take off the, the seeds and the membrane. But if you like the maximum heat, well, then go ahead and leave those seeds and membrane in and you got it. So here's an easy way to get those seeds and membranes out. You just cut those jalapenos into quarters like I did, and then you just take the end of your knife and you slice those right out. So here's a word of caution. When you're handling these peppers, don't touch your eyes, okay? Don't rub your, your nose or your eyes or anything like that or you're gonna be not happy, as the oils from this can really burn. Like I said earlier, I really like a super fine dice on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and run my knife through it a couple more times. All right, it's time to put that in the bowl and give it a little mix. Every good salsa needs a little bit of cilantro, so here we go. I like to shave off a few leaves and then chop it up and drop it right in. I'm removing some of the stems here, but you can leave those in and just add them right to your salsa. Give this a nice little toss and then we'll add some lime juice. And then squeeze a whole lime into this just like you would the like button if you're enjoying this video. Okay, I'm gonna cover this with some saran wrap and place it in the fridge to get it nice and chilled. It must be time for chef joke number two. How many apples grow on a tree? All of them. Now I'm gonna work on my honey lime vinaigrette. 
I'm going to need two or three limes just depending on how big they are. Oh, and let me mention you can get the written recipe below the video in the description area, so click down there. We're going to keep squeezing limes until we get our third of a cup. Into the blender goes our lime juice. Next goes our olive oil. Next I'm going to add some honey, but let me show you a little trick to make it easier to get it out of your measuring uh, spoon. So coat your measuring spoon with just a little bit of olive oil, and I promise you when you add that honey and you go to pour it in your blender, it's not going to stick. It's going to completely pour out into the blender. And then when you go to add your second tablespoon, you're going to have to reapply the oil to do it again. A little Dijon mustard goes next, along with some garlic powder and some ground cumin. Last but not least, we're going to add some salt and pepper. Now we'll just blend that up in the, our blender here and mix it on high for just a few seconds and then we'll pour it into a mason jar and keep it in that until we're ready to use it. Okay, it's time to talk about our chicken. We're going to use breast tenders here. I like that they cook up quick and you want to season these up with some salt, garlic powder, and some smoked paprika. I'm going to be cooking my chicken tenders in cast iron for a number of reasons. I love cast iron because you get such a nice sear on your meat. And it doesn't impart any chemicals into your food like, say, nonstick does. And it's a great way to keep your food warm, let's say, before you, you know, serve it up. Because cast iron is great at retaining heat. So you want to make sure that your pan is really hot before you add your meat. Lay the chicken in and don't be tempted to move it or, you know, touch it at all, just let it cook and sear for a few minutes. I'm adding a little bit of salt to the second side, but you don't have to do that if you're concerned about sodium. So let this cook undisturbed for about three or four minutes until you get a nice sear and then we'll turn it over. Now you're going to see when I turn this over that the chicken does not stick to the pan and I've got a nice golden crust. You want to cook this to an internal temperature of 165, but do not overcook it or it's going to be dried out. If your pan looks a little dry, add a little bit more olive oil. When all of the chicken is done, place it on a plate and keep it warm. The last thing we need to prepare is our asparagus. Make sure that you rinse it and dry it really well because if you leave it wet, it's going to spatter all over when you add it to the pan with oil. I'm cooking this over medium-high heat and I'm adding just a touch of salt. How long do you cook this? Well, I'm going to cook it until it gets a nice caramelized exterior. You're going to see that eventually. And they're just slightly limp. I like them slightly crunchy, but just a little. That depends on you too, so however you like to have yours. This is how done I like mine, and so I'm going to take them off and set them on a plate, and then we're going to take it over to the cutting board and cut up the asparagus and the chicken. I cut the asparagus into one and a half inch size pieces. So with the chicken, well, here we go. We're just going to slice this up into, you know, one half inch strips. This is how you want the chicken to look. For my salad, I'm thinly slicing some red onion and try to get it as paper thin as you possibly can. I think that's the best. And then we'll add that to our greens, which is a combination of romaine lettuce and some greens. Shake up that dressing and add a few tablespoons to the lettuce. Give it a toss and see you know, how it's coated. If you need to add a little bit more, then go ahead and do that. This looks a little bit dry to me, so I'm going to add a little bit more dressing. Now you want to wait till the very end to cut up your avocado because it will oxidize and turn brown. So I'm doing this at the last minute here. So I'm just going to slice into the avocado and just have it ready to go when I'm ready to add it to the salad. Here is everything you could want in a salad. A nice, lightly dressed set of greens. We'll lay that down and then we come in with that mango salsa. It's got that tangy little flavor to it with a slight touch of heat. Just delicious and refreshing. We'll finish it off here with some roasted asparagus, which oh, the flavors are just incredible. This is our grilled chicken. 
Our chicken is just perfectly grilled, tender and juicy. Lay those slices on there along with the avocado, which is nice and creamy. I'm telling you, if you're not hungry, you should be. Then we finish it off with another drizzle. Not surprising, right? We gotta get that sauce everywhere. And then you go in for the bite and you're in salad heaven. So if you're a salad lover, then you've got to try this salad. It is going to knock your socks off. Okay, how about a little indulgence after that salad? A little chocolate cake. This is made with quality ingredients. Click the link on the screen and it'll take you right to the recipe. I hope you try today's salad. It is really delicious. And let me know down in the comments if you do and what you think about it, okay? All right, we'll see you back here next week for another delicious and healthy recipe.